An obscured word, crawled by some boy with a piece of brick, stood out clearly in the moonlight, and I erased it. Drawing my shoe restingly along the stone, I wandered down to the beach and sprawled out on the sand. Most of the big shore places were closed now, and there were hardly any lights except the shadowy, moving glow of a ferry boat across the sound. And as the moon rose higher, the essential houses, inessential houses, began to melt away until gradually I became aware of the old island here that flowered once for Dutch sailors' eyes. A fresh green beast of the new world, its vanished trees, the trees that had made way for Gatsby's house, at once pandered in whispers to the last and greatest of all human dreams. For a transitory enchanted moment, man must have held his breath in the presence of his continent. Compelled into an aesthetic contemplation, he neither understood nor desires. desired. Face to face for the last time in history with something commensurate to his capacity for wonder. And as I sat there brooding on the old unknown world, I thought of Gatsby's wonder. And when he first picked out the light, green light at the end of Daisy's dock, he had come a long way to, his, to this blue lawn. And his dream must have seemed so close that he could hardly fail to grasp it. He did not know that it was already behind him, somewhere back in that vast obscurity beyond the city, where the dark fields of the Republic rolled on under the night. Gatsby believed in the green light, the orgastic, the orgastic future that year by year recedes before us. It eluded us, but that's no matter, and tomorrow we'll run faster, stretch out our arms farther, and one fine morning. So we beat on, boats against the current, Born back ceaselessly into the past. Thank you for joining me for the reading of the of the Great Gatsby.